On January 13th, 2020, Force 13 has released the 2019 World Cyclone Report, a detailed report on the storms of 2019, record statistics and other information. The uh, cover image is an International Space Station photo of Hurricane Dorian not long before its landfall in the northern Bahamas. I'll be reading through this whole report here. You can find the text version of the report on the website force13.com forward slash 2019wcr.pdf. Activity in 2019 has been slightly above average. The year began with a mild El Nino event fizzling out later on to overall neutral conditions. A significant feature of the year was the large amount of late year activity in the Indian Ocean and Western Pacific due to a substantial Indian Ocean dipole event. The North Atlantic saw another year of above average activity, although most of the cyclones were relatively weak with an overall peak wind speed 4 miles per hour below the long term average. The Pacific was near to slightly above average overall. The Southern Hemisphere was well below average overall this year. However, there were numerous powerful storms in the Indian Ocean early in the year, with more impressive cyclones in the northern half of the basin later on. This year saw 101 tropical cyclones, of which 95 were tropical storms, 54 of hurricane strength and 33 of major hurricane strength, along with 6 subtropical cyclones. This compares to 115, 106, 56 and 33 last year a slight change to what was reported in last year's report due to standard reanalysis. 2019 began with an already active cyclone in the form of Penny near Australia. January itself proved to be fairly quiet, with only six tropical cyclones, one of these reaching hurricane strength. February produced another six, although much stronger cyclones in the form of Funani, Category 4, Galena, Category 4, and Wutip, Category 5, in the Western Pacific. March saw the Southern Hemisphere reach his azimuth, with the deadliest storm of the year in the form of Cyclone Idai, along with Cyclone Halle, Category 4, Savannah, Category 3, Trevor, Category 3, Veronica, Category 4, and Joanina, Category 4, along with a rare South Atlantic tropical cyclone named Iba. Late April saw another surge in activity with Cyclone Kenneth striking Africa as a Category 4 and Cyclone Fanny, a Category 5, off the coast of India. May was an incredibly quiet month, but still produced the first Atlantic cyclone before the official start of hurricane season, Andrea. With Hurricane Alvin only forming in late June, the Eastern Pacific had one of its latest starts to a hurricane season. July began with Hurricane Barbara, which became the earliest Category 5 Pacific hurricane in nine years, along with Hurricane Barry, which struck the Gulf of Mexico coast on July 13th. The month ended with Hurricane Eric, a strong Category 4 storm in the open Pacific. Early August brought a typhoon landfall to southern Japan and two other major typhoons. Several other tropical storms formed that month, including Dorian, which eventually went on to become one of the strongest hurricanes on record as it struck the northern Bahamas. In September, the eastern Pacific saw Category 4 Hurricane Juliet and a similarly strong Kiko which persisted as a tropical storm for almost a week after peaking. Later, Hurricane Lorena struck the western coast of Mexico and the Baja California Peninsula. In the Atlantic, Hurricane Umberto peaked as a Category 3 before passing close to Bermuda, along with Lorenzo late in the month, which became one of the strongest storms in the eastern Atlantic. Elsewhere, Typhoon Lingling affected the Korean Peninsula, whilst Faxai struck the Tokyo area of Japan early in the month. A subtropical depression also formed in the East China Sea. One storm was seen in the North Indian Ocean that month. Hika briefly reached Category 2 status. October featured three severe cyclones, beginning with Typhoon Hagibis which reached Category 5 status on two separate occasions before striking eastern Japan. Hagibis and Faxai both became multi-billion dollar disasters in the region. 
November continued the rout in the Western Pacific, with typhoons Halong, Category 5, Fengshan, Category 3, Kalmegi, Category 1, and Kamuri, Category 4, the latter of which becoming the most destructive typhoon in terms of structures damaged since Typhoon Haiyan in 2013. The Northern Indian Ocean also continued its impressive activity with Cyclone Bulbul, Category 2, Cyclone Maha, Category 3, and two tropical storms in early December. The Atlantic and Eastern Pacific region had a final burst in mid-November, along with a second subtropical cyclone in the Mediterranean after the first one formed in late October. In December, Cyclone Ambali explosively intensified to reach Category 5 status in the southwest Indian Ocean, along with Belna, which made a major landfall in Madagascar. Typhoon Fanfone struck the Philippines over the Christmas period, with Sarai and Calvinia affecting Fiji and Mauritius in the final days of 2019. On April 4, 2019, Force 13 released its projection for the Atlantic hurricane season, suggesting near-average activity with a fairly low confidence, typically defined as within 20% of the long-term averages. The season produced two more tropical storms and the projection, along with three other subtropical cyclones. The hurricane and major hurricane predictions saw more success, with the final numbers being 6 and 3, according to Force 13's intensity estimates. On the same day, Force 13 released its projection for the Eastern Pacific hurricane season, suggesting near or below average activity with a fair amount of confidence. 19 storms ultimately formed, with only 6 hurricanes and 4 major hurricanes. The projections were also released for the Pacific typhoon season, suggesting near average activity. The season produced 27 tropical storms, 17 typhoons and 11 major typhoons. With 95 tropical storms, 4 subtropical, 2019 ends slightly above average. The 1960-2019 average now stands at 92.1. Due to lack of satellite imagery, years prior to the 1960s are not typically included in the data. However, since the data is readily available, the 1884-2019 to chart has also been included below the 1960-2019 to chart. The historical numbers are slightly different compared to last year due to ongoing reanalysis. In 1884, only ship and land reports existed, resulting in the lower numbers reported. These numbers gradually increased as shipping lanes handled more traffic in storm-prone areas, and communications were improved. Aircraft first intercepted cyclones in the 1940s, coinciding with a slight increase in numbers, possibly due to the beginning of air patrols after the war. Polar orbiting satellites started oper operating in the 1960s, but often had gaps in their coverage, until geostationary satellites covered the Atlantic and Pacific by the mid-1970s. Since then, numbers have stabilised and have generally been on a slight downward trend overall. The following chart shows the trend with number of tropical depressions, storms, hurricanes, majors and Category 5 storms. In the early years of satellite imagery, more tropical depressions were recognised, potentially due to the lack of quality of the images and more stringent criteria in place today. The reverse effect is likely true for the stronger storms, with primitive satellite imagery failing to detect or sufficiently justify a more intense storm. Until the late 1970s, satellite imagery was vastly inferior to reconnaissance planes in estimating a mature storm's intensity. The following chart shows storm numbers by basin per year since 1949. The Western Pacific has seen the most activity each year apart from 1983, 2005 and 2015. The basins shown are the North Atlantic, Eastern Pacific, Western Pacific, North Indian Ocean, Southwest Indian Ocean, Australian Region, South Pacific and Mediterranean Sea and South Atlantic. 
We have also provided landfall statistics for the preceding 65 years. A landfall is defined as the point in which the center of a cyclone moves over a landmass. This still applies when an eye is present, although some agencies define a landfall as the edge of the eye moving over land. An incidence of the storm's eye wall making landfall is usually defined as a direct hit. Twenty nineteen saw several new implementations and discoveries in terms of data collection, cataloging, and operational observations. Early in the year, Force Thirteen's reanalysis project into all tropical cyclones in the Western Pacific between eighteen eighty four and nineteen forty four concluded after nineteen months, cataloging almost fifteen hundred cyclones. The full results of this reanalysis can be found at our sister website, cyclonehistory.com. This year we also publish findings in long-term tropical storm movement trends, accumulated cyclone energy trends, and began construction of a new best track database. Finally, in February, operational testing began on Force 13's new satellite intensity estimating tool, SATED. This tool works by taking six cloud top temperature readings around the center of the storm and temperature of the eye. These parameters along with an eye structure score produces the final wind speed estimation of a storm through SATI's algorithm. Operational testing was completed in October. Since 2014 we have compiled data sheets showing all of the storms of the year based on several criteria. This provides easy access to particular records about storms that occurred this year. The columns, reading from left to right, show the storm name, basin of formation, date of formation, year, month, day, date of dissipation, peak intensity in miles per hour, lowest central pressure in millibars, and Saffir Simpson hurricane wind scale category. These intensity values are based upon existing information and our own analysis and is correct to our best estimations as of January 6. However, cyclones Calvinia and Sarai survived into 2020 and only the peak intensity attained in 2019 is shown in the table. Many storms have their intensities measured by satellites alone unless they make landfall or is intercepted by a reconnaissance plane. Thus, most typhoons and southern hemisphere cyclones at peak intensity are merely estimates and may be higher or lower. Here's a list of storms listed by amount of landfalls. This is followed by a list of storms by countries affected. Now a list of storms listed by death toll. And listed by injured persons. Here's a list of storms listed by monetary damages. You will notice that Fanfone has an asterisk next to its value. This is assumed to be correct at the current time of publication, although earlier estimates were lower and thus it is further down in the table, although it may be uh, returned further up the table later on. You can see a similar result on the storms listed by buildings damaged. Early on in the report, we said that Kamuri was the most damaging storm in terms of structures damaged since Haiyan of 2013. Fanfone appears to have possibly beaten Kamuri as well 
in those latest figures. And listed by buildings destroyed. Here's a list of storms listed by the amount of evacuees. Below shows the progression at six hourly intervals of worldwide tropical cyclone activity in 2019. All intensity categories are in correspondence with the Sappho Simpson hurricane wind scale. The next page will show all the records set in 2019 for intensity and longevity. In the record section of this report, all storms that set their record in 2019 will be counted as part of this year's records, even if they formed or dissipated in a different calendar year. If a storm's record encompasses multiple years, as could be seen in longevity records for instance, the record will be counted towards both years. Intensity and longevity records. Most intense central pressures worldwide were Typhoon Halong, 890 millibars, Typhoon Hagibis, 892 millibars, Hurricane Dorian, 908 millibars. Strongest wind speeds worldwide were Typhoon Halong, 190 miles per hour, Hurricane Dorian, 190 miles per hour, and Typhoon Hagibis, 185 miles per hour. The most intense Category 4 storms were Cyclone Galena, 929 millibars, Typhoon Ling Ling, 930 millibars, and Typhoon Buoloi, 933 millibars. The strongest 24-hour average wind speed was Typhoon Halong, 175 miles per hour, Hurricane Dorian, 175 miles per hour, and Typhoon Hagibis, 170 miles per hour. The most intense Category 3 storms were Cyclone Savannah, 945 millibars, Typhoon Fengshan, 948 millibars, tied with Cyclone Vayu and Typhoon Krosa. Most intense 24-hour average air pressure was Typhoon Hagibis at 904 millibars, followed by Typhoon Halong, 905 millibars, and Hurricane Dorian, 915 millibars. Longest duration as a tropical storm or stronger. Hurricane Dorian, 336 hours. Hurricane Kiko, 264 hours. And Cyclone Omar, 252 hours. Longest duration as a Category 5 storm. Typhoon Hagibis, 42 hours. Hurricane Dorian, 36 hours. Typhoon Halong, 30 hours. Longest duration at sub 900 millibars, Typhoon Halong, 6 hours, and Typhoon Hagibis, also 6 hours. Longest duration at category 4 or stronger, Typhoon Hagibis, 114 hours, Hurricane Dorian, 84 hours, and Cyclone Kiar, 66 hours. Longest duration at sub 920 millibars, Typhoon Hagibis, 54 hours, Typhoon Halong, 30 hours, and Cyclone Kiar, 24 hours. Longest duration at Category 1 or stronger, Hurricane Dorian, 246 hours, Hurricane Lorenzo, 180 hours, and Typhoon Hagibis, 156 hours. Longest duration at Category 4 without strengthening, Typhoon Lekima, 42 hours, 
Typhoon Buoloi also 42 hours, and multiple other storms at 30 hours. Longest duration at Category 3 without strengthening, Typhoon Fengshan 42 hours, Hurricane Umberto 42 hours, and Cyclone Maha 30 hours. Longest duration at Category 2 without strengthening, Cyclone Polar 36 hours, Cyclone Bulbul 18 hours, multiple other storms 12 hours. Longest duration at Category 1 without strengthening, Cyclone Omar 48 hours, multiple other storms at 36 hours. Longest duration at Tropical Storm Strength without strengthening, Tropical Storm Penny 168 hours, Tropical Storm Sebastian 132 hours, and Tropical Storm Wallace 120 hours. Shortest cyclone duration, Subtropical Storm Nestor 6 hours, Subtropical Storm Andrea 12 hours, Tropical Depression 15L 12 hours. Longest cyclone duration, including Tropical Depression status, Hurricane Dorian 348 hours, Hurricane Kiko 300 hours, multiple other storms 252 hours. Average minimum central pressure by basin, South Indian 957 millibars, Australian region 969, Western Pacific 967, Eastern Pacific 989, South Pacific 977, North Atlantic 987, North Indian 959. Activity records. Most tropical storms or stronger active simultaneously 6 on August 4th and 5 on August 3rd to 4th, 4th to 5th, 6th, September 17th to 21st and 22nd to 24th. Most tropical storms or stronger active in a 30 day period 20 from August 21st to September 20th from August 24th to September 23rd, and from August 31st to September 30th. Most hurricanes active simultaneously, 3 from September 2nd to 7th, and on November 7th. Most Category 3 storms active simultaneously, 2 on February 8th, March 22nd, August 8th, September 5th, and November 4th. Most consecutive days with a tropical storm active, 56 from October 17th to December 11th, 32 from September 13th to October 14th, and 31 from February 5th to March 7th. Most consecutive days with two tropical storms active, 19 from September 14th to October 2nd, 15 from July 28th to August 11th, and 14 from March 14th to 27th. Most consecutive days with a hurricane active, 20 from March 10th to 29th, and 13 from August 28th to September 9th. Most consecutive days with two hurricanes active, 6 from September 2nd to 7th, and 4 from March 21st to 24th. Most consecutive days with a major hurricane active, 12 from March 17th to 28th and 10 from August 30th to September 8th. Most consecutive days with two major hurricanes active, 2 from February 22nd to 23rd. Landfall records. Strongest landfalls. Hurricane Dorian, 185 miles per hour. Hurricane Dorian, 185 miles per hour and Hurricane Dorian, 175 miles per hour. Most landfalls, Hurricane Dorian, 5, Cyclone Trevor, 3, Typhoon Fanfone, 3. Most hurricane landfalls, Hurricane Dorian, 4, Typhoon Fanfone, 3, multiple other storms, 2. Most major hurricane landfalls, Hurricane Dorian, 2, Cyclone Trevor, 2. Location and movement records. Here you can see the furthest north and furthest south Category 5 cyclones and the last time the, these feats were achieved in their respective basins.
and similar statistics for all tropical cyclones by basin. The fastest measured cyclone movement this year was Tropical Storm Sebastian, 45 miles per hour, Hurricane Lorenzo, 44 miles per hour, Tropical Storm Podal, 42 miles per hour. Slowest measured cyclone movement was Veronica, Wallace, Vayu, Dorian and Neoguri, 0 miles per hour. Chronological records. Here's a list of earliest and latest Category 5 cyclones with regard to local seasons compared to previous times that these feats were achieved. First listing Category 5 cyclones and then Category 3 cyclones. Eye and size records. Largest eyes Typhoon Crosa, 206 nautical miles, Cyclone Omar, 66 nautical miles, Cyclone Idai, 66 nautical miles. Smallest eyes, Cyclone Hika, 6 nautical miles, Typhoon Hagibis, 7 nautical miles, Hurricane Eric, 9 nautical miles. Warmest eyes, Typhoon Hagibis, 25.4 Celsius, Hurricane Dorian, 21.8 Celsius, Cyclone Ambali, 21.7 Celsius. Largest storm size, Typhoon Crosa, 950 nautical miles, Typhoon Hagibis, 750 nautical miles, Typhoon Lekima, 625 nautical miles. Intensification records. Fastest over a 12 hour period, Cyclone Ambali, 75 miles per hour, Cyclone Veronica, 70 miles per hour, Typhoon Hagibis, 55 miles per hour, Typhoon Halong, 50 miles per hour. Fastest over a 24 hour period, Cyclone Ambali, 120 miles per hour, Typhoon Hagibis, 110 miles per hour, Typhoon Halong, 100 miles per hour, Cyclone Veronica, 95 miles per hour, Hurricane Eric, 75 miles per hour. Fastest time to increase wind speeds by 100 miles per hour. Cyclone Ambali, 24 hours. Typhoon Hagibis, 24 hours. And Cyclone Veronica, 30 hours. Fastest time to decrease pressure by 100 millibars. Typhoon Hagibis, 30 hours. Typhoon Halong, 54 hours. Force 13 during 2019. 2019 was largely seen as a year of consolidation on Force 13, with more big ambitions for the year 2020. However, several new features did take hold on our content this year. 2018 saw difficulties handling multiple storm events simultaneously. This was somewhat improved in 2019 by the adoption of a split screen format as well as improvements to the automated streaming service. 2019 also saw improvements on storm updates, team management, use of forecasting and observation tools, reanalysis, and increased use of other media. In total, there were 606 videos uploaded on the Force 13 main channel throughout 2019, which was 94 less than in 2018. There are also 32 videos on Force 13 Extra, 19 on Force 13 UK and Ireland, 249 on Force 13 AU and Oceaneer, 136 on Force 13 US and Caribbean, and 43 on Force 13's Tropical Archive and Tropical Archive More. Additionally, Force 13's gaming channel produced 12 videos, and Space 13 uploaded one. Storm coverage tended to be timely and accurate throughout 2019, with a regular video upload schedule in place for significant storms that affected the United States, the Philippines, Mauritius, Mozambique, Japan and India. Lead time for live events and storm updates improved, 
with early updates before the formation of a cyclone becoming increasingly common. Later in the year, advances in social media techniques and social media friendly content increased exposure in viewer base. Limited capacities resulted from staff shortages in parts of August, November and December. However, with manageable storm numbers during these periods, standards remained fair. Early in the year, Cyclone Idai devastated parts of Mozambique, with Force 13's coverage being amongst the leaders during the event. Latest updates on the storm were used and relayed by humanitarian aid workers to better prepare for the storm and its aftermath. For the first time, a regular tropical weather bulletin schedule continued throughout the Atlantic and East Pacific hurricane seasons, quickly becoming a reliable staple for viewers. Production times for tropical weather bulletins were optimized, resulting in production windows as short as 28 minutes. The most important point of the year was during the passage of Hurricane Dorian, where public interest elevated to record levels. Force 13 ran continuous live coverage on the storm for five days, along with multiple other streams in the storm's early and late stages. In the early stages of Dorian, few models or forecasters picked up on the storm's upcoming intensification phase. Indeed, the National Hurricane Center forecast Dorian to only reach tropical storm status at first. Once Hurricane Dorian cleared the Virgin Islands, our coverage and forecasting accuracy was good and at times outstanding, particularly around the storm's peak where the forecasting and broadcasting teams were under immense and unprecedented pressures. Notably, the team declared Dorian to have reached Category 5 intensity at 9pm Eastern Daylight Time on August 31st, over six hours before the National Hurricane Center followed suit. Our subsequent reanalysis supports the claims that we made operationally. Our Hurricane Dorian coverage was also simulcast by Michigan-based Horizon Broadband. Along with extensive live coverage, there were also 38 regular storm updates produced on Dorian, beating the previous record 37 produced during Hurricane Irma. Force 13 also engaged audiences in Asia during its coverage on Typhoon Hagibis in October, setting new viewing records for our audiences in Japan, Thailand, Indonesia and the Northern Mariana Islands, and second highest recorded daily viewership in the Philippines. Towards the end of the year, New graphics streamlined video uploads, reducing render times to a record low 4 minutes. 2019 had approximately 5.4 million views on the channel during the year. This figure may be inaccurate by up to 5,000 each way. By comparison, 2018 finished with just over 5.3 million. September 1st set a new record daily view count at 246,298. The old record was 242,575 on March 27, 2017. That day also set a subscriber record at 943, previous record 942 on September 13, 2018. This day also set a watch time record of 1.3 million minutes, Previous record, 745,677 on October 5th, 2016. In terms of watch time, 2019 also comes out on top, with 14 million minutes of viewing time collectively. This is almost 2 million more than in 2018. Future reports will display viewing time in hours. In 2019, approval rate also reached a new record with 75,885 likes compared to 47,905 last year. Typically, the amount of dislikes has also been the highest on record this year, with 2,539 compared to 2050 last year. However, the actual approval rating has risen by 0.9%. In 2019, comments on the YouTube videos amounted to 234,570, compared to 153,218 in 2018. The subscriber base has grown a further 12,867 in 2019, after an increase of 18,152 in 2018. The Hurricane Dorian event set numerous new viewing records, 
with the channel at times reaching 12,000 views per hour during the height of the event. On Force 13's live coverage, concurrent viewers surpassed 1,800, well above the previous record of 1079 set during Typhoon Mankut. Overnight view counts also set new highest minimum records, with the automated feed retaining over 500 concurrent viewers during the early morning of September 2nd. This year's report does not contain top 10 country viewing numbers due to calculation errors beyond our control. Here though is the list of view counts across all of our channels in 2019 versus 2018. There's the Force 13 main account view count chart expressed as a cumulative view count throughout the year compared to other years. Below that is the 2019 approval rating in percent on a, across all of the channels compared to 2018. Here's the 2019 Storm Image Gallery. Here's a list of all our channels and outlets. And points of contact. Again, the text version of the World Cyclone Report, which will be correcting any minor errors that are currently contained in the report as we've seen throughout this presentation, can be found at force13.com forward slash 2019wcr.pdf.